Hi, my name is Danielle Sicard and I'm the town clerk here in Walpole. I'm here today to tell you and give voters in the town of Walpole some information that hopefully is useful for them as we approach a very busy election cycle with the presidential election that is scheduled to take place on Tuesday, November 8th, 2016. Polls on that day will be open from 7 in the morning until 8 o'clock p.m. And here in Walpole, we have three polling locations available. Precincts 1 and 2 vote at the Old Post Road School. Precincts 3, 4, and 5 vote at Blackburn Hall. And pre Precincts 6, 7, and 8 vote at the Fisher School. We do expect a very large turnout for this election. And so doing some prep work as a voter would make this be a better experience for yourself. We're hoping that this information will help you save time and save aggravation on election day. We are, as I mentioned, expecting a high turnout. I would imagine that we'll have 14,000 voters that want to come out and vote in this election. Logistically, there's some things that we can do and you can do as a voter that will help this experience be better. First of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about early voting. This year, beginning with this election, Massachusetts laws have changed that allow voters to vote early in elections that are held in November every two years. During the early voting period, voters will have the opportunity to come in for the 11 days prior to election day to town hall and cast their vote then. Obviously, the more people who participate in early voting bring less people out on election day and make it a smoother transition all day long on election day for everyone. So I'm highly encouraging people to take advantage of this great opportunity that our legislators have put into effect beginning with this election. That 11 day period cycle begins on October 24th and runs through November 4th. During all regular business hours of the town hall, voters from Walpole can come in and cast their ballot. They'll do it just like they do on election day where they check in, receive a ballot, cast their ballot and check out. We will, in addition to those regular business hours, have a Saturday, October 29th. We will be open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., again, for early voting for voters here in Walpole. And just as a reminder, we do have evening hours on Tuesdays. And in that 11-day period, there are two Tuesdays, October 25th and November 1st, where voters could come out until 8 p.m. and cast their ballot. If you'd like some more information on that, I encourage you to go to the town's website at www.walpole-ma.gov and on the home page you'll see a logo that says early voting and it's blue. Click on that and all the information that I just provided you could be found there. If you do find yourself unable to come and vote early during the early voting period and you're coming to the polls on election day, there's a lot of things that you can do as a voter in advance to make this experience better for yourself. We are running a Know Before You Go campaign. This is also something that I encourage voters to, to check out from our website on the home page. It is a red banner that says, Know Before You Go. There are uh, four essential things that every voter should know before they arrive to the polls. One, are you a registered voter? You can check that out right now and you can find out yourself online right from that link as to whether or not you are a registered voter. Also from our homepage, you can register to vote if you are not a registered voter. Right online, right from the comfort of your home. Please note the deadline for registering to vote is Wednesday, October 19th. You can use the online portal as I said and also the town clerk's office will be open that day on October 19th from 8 in the morning until 8 p.m. simply for you to come in and register to vote. The other um, item that you need to know, number two, is whether or not your voter status is active or inactive. Now, let me explain a little bit about how you become an inactive voter. You're still a registered voter and you still have the ability to vote, but if you don't complete your annual street list census form and return it to the town clerk's office, you by law become an inactive voter. And what will happen is when you arrive at the polls, you will have to fill out additional forms and provide an ID to prove that you still are a registered voter and that you still live here in Walpole. Again, if you find this out by looking and going through the link that's on the web page, that you are inactive, simply come to the town clerk's office and do that before October 21st. We in the office can have you fill out a census form, make you an active voter, 
and avoid any time for you and aggravation that you may have at the polls. Number three that we ask you to know before you go is where do I vote? There are three polling locations here in town. Years prior, there were um, polling opportunities at Walpole High School. Most voters need to understand that is not a current polling location. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, we have three polling locations. Precinct 1 and 2 voted Old Post Road School. Precinct 3, 4, and 5 voted the Blackburn Hall. And Precinct 6, 7, and 8 vote at Fisher School. I repeat, there are no polling location or available voting at Walpole High School. So know where your polling location is. Save yourself the time and aggravation from having to drive between locations by knowing that in advance. Simply click on our web page to the know before you go and you can find out all of these things. The fourth thing that we ask voters to do before arriving at the polls is to understand what you're going to be voting on. In addition to the presidential, which I believe most people understand is going to be on the ballot, there are other races that are on the ballot. And more importantly, there are other questions. And I mean importantly because they take a long time to understand and read. I'll point out a couple of things. When you go to this link that's on the website, you can see a sample of your ballot. You can look at it in advance and you can spend the time to know how you're going to vote and alleviate the lines by being able to mark your ballot more quickly. You will get from the Secretary of State's office in the coming weeks um, a book, we call it the Red Book in the town clerk's office. It will have a summary of all of the questions for you. But if you don't have that, you can also see that information from this link. Okay, so now I wanna just take a little bit of time to kind of go through with you what happens when you arrive on election day. So you haven't been able to come to vote early. You've already gone to the, to the website. You know before you go those four major things that we just talked about. You should see that every entrance um, at the polling locations are, are designed to reduce the congestion of the entrances where their lines will be forming. Most importantly, the lines will be likely where you check in and where you enter the facility. So we've created some traffic flows with some signage that allow voters to exit hopefully a different location than where the crowds will be forming for the check-in. So at Old Post Road, where precincts one and two are, you simply have two doors that you enter through. The door on the right will be for voters to enter and the door on the left will be for voters to exit. When you enter into the facility, the same traffic flow will happen where voters go to the right to get to where the check-in is and when they're done voting and casting their ballot, they will exit to the left-hand side in a hopes that we can reduce, again, the congestion that will happen with traffic flow with so many voters coming in and out. At Blackburn Hall, we ask that you either enter from the front outside stairs or from the side entrance that's closer to the front of the building and use the stairs from there to go up or the elevator should you need handicap accessibility. And that every voter would exit unless you need the handicap um, elevator would en exit from the far end of the building down the set of stairs and out the door that's closest to the recreation department office. At Fisher School, where precincts 6, 7, and 8 are, parking is available on both sides of the building and the gymnasium. Entrance to the gymnasium will be the one closest to the playground. Voters are, are, can use either parking, however, the entrance to get into the actual polling location in the gymnasium will be the, the entrance that's closer to the playground. And all voters will be asked to exit from the door inside of the gymnasium that's opposite to the entrance. Now that means the hallway will have a lot of congestion. A side note on Fisher School is that there, we are, will anticipate there will be much congestion there as there's limited space for check-in and voters will be held in the hallway by election workers until these um, workers can notify them that there are avail available booths and voters can then enter to check in inside of the polling location in the gymnasium. At every one of our polling locations, at the entrance, you will see a large totem pole sign. On that sign, you will see that all of the streets are listed that are in Walpole and their precincts are also listed there. As I had mentioned in the Know Before You Go campaign, knowing your precinct in advance is really helpful. 
you'll, I would imagine that if every person walking in needed to look at this totem pole sign to find their precinct then, we would have quite a, a bit more congestion than if you know this precinct before arriving at the polls. But if you do happen to enter and into the polls and do not know it, please check that out prior to actually entering into the polling location. From there, once you know your precinct, you should find large A-frame signs. Those large A-frame signs will have the precinct numbers on it. There's usually two people that are sitting at a table that are close to that. We encourage that you go towards the person that's closest to the A-frame sign, as that's the person who will check you in on the voting list. There's a, a sign directly in front of that person telling you what it is that you are required by law to state and in the order that you're required to state it. It is as follows. You're to state your street name, then your street number, then your last name, and your first name. At that time, the election official under state law is also required to repeat that same information to you. And they're required to repeat it in a very loud voice, and the reason for that is that it needs to be loud enough for any observers that are here on this day, particularly involved with the campaigns, are able to hear them. It is required that they repeat this and they repeat it loudly. If your name is on the voting list at that point and there's no highlights, meaning you're an active voter, that election official will then check you off and the person sitting next to them would provide you with a ballot. Now, just a side note, they cannot provide you with a ballot outside of the guardrails where you're standing in front of them at the table. Ballots are only permitted to be within inside of the guardrail and so you'll need to walk slightly around the table get the ballot from that person, and then find yourself a voting booth that is open to cast your ballot. However, if on the voting list there's a highlight next to your name, generally that's for inactive voters as we spoke about earlier, these are people who would then need to go to the warden's table. They are not permitted to be handed a ballot until they've completed the appropriate paperwork, shown an ID to prove that they actually still reside at the address that they're listed. They would go to the warden's table, which is generally, except at the Fisher School, a table that's directly across from the check-in table. As I mentioned, that's generally because you haven't completed a census form, or you completed the census form and somehow along the trail of the mail, we didn't get it and it wasn't processed. You will then need to fill out that form. You'll get a form in triplicate. You present that triplicate form to the check-in person and the check-out person who allow you to cast your ballot. As you enter into the voting uh, precinct after you've received your ballot, we ask you to find an empty voting booth. In the empty voting booths, you'll see that there's a voting marking pen. We ask that you take your ballot and you carefully mark in the ovals, completing the ovals in full. The image cast machines that read the ballots at the end work best as the ovals are completed um, in full. After you're done completing your ballot, you'll find the checkout table. In every one of our polling locations, the checkout table is directly to the far end of the check-in. So although it seems natural to want to go back to where you came when you were received the ballot, it's actually on the far end of the gymnasium from there. You'll then find that there is somebody there, just like at the check-in, and they're going to go through the exact same process with you, asking you for the exact same information and also repeating it loudly so that any observers could hear the election official calling your name as a, as a voter who's coming in to cast their ballot that day. From there, you then proceed to the ballot box. On the ballot box, um, you can approach it and you'll see that there's a large LED screen on the right-hand side. You want to wait to put your ballot in until that sign on the LED screen says, system ready. As soon as it's ready, you can put your ballot in there facing in any direction. It could, the ballot can face up, it can face down, it can be upside down, it can any way but sideways, which clearly won't fit through the machine. If there's an error with your ballot, generally that's something like an overvoted race. If you were to vote for two people for the race of president, it, the machine's going to then light up and make some beeping noises because you're, you're not allowed to cast for two people. You then should follow the prompts that are on the LED screen as that voter, and it will essentially give you the option to either cast the ballot as is, or to reject that ballot. If you reject that ballot, the ballot will spit back out at you, and then you have an opportunity to spoil that ballot. All voters have an opportunity to spoil up to three ballots maximum on election day. 
If you choose to spoil a ballot, find an election official at that time so that they can clearly mark that as a spoiled ballot and provide you with a new ballot. I'd also make a note that Mass General Law requires that it is the voters who cast their ballots into the machines, therefore not allowing children to cast the ballots for them. It is the voter that must put their ballot into the machine to be cast. And as I mentioned, traffic flow at this point is really one of the most important parts. Although you've finished what you need to do at this point on election day, I can guarantee you that there are lines forming on the inside who are waiting patiently to get checked in and then for an available booth. So we ask that you follow the signs, unless you're at Blackburn Hall where you need to go the elevator and there's additional signage for that, we ask that you use the appropriate exit um, ways. And that purpose is so that you simply are not running into the lines that are forming at the check-in. So as I uh, said earlier, I'd like to remind the voters that with great power comes great responsibility. And it is an awesome responsibility that we all have as voters to cast our vote on November 8th. But save time and save aggravation by knowing before you go to the polls those four things that we talked about. Are you an active voter? Are you a registered voter? Where do I vote? What polling location? And what precinct? And most importantly, read through the Red Book and look online in advance to know how you plan to vote that day. Please, I encourage you to take advantage of early voting. We're staffing that. We're paying for that. It's required by law. Let's make it be successful. Let's have, of the 14,000 people that we're expecting to come out, let's have at least 4,000 of them come in advance to reduce the traffic issues that we're bound to have across the town, to reduce the um, parking issues that we are going to have at every polling location, and to reduce the lines and the waiting for you at the polling locations. All of this information, whether you're interested in finding out whether you're a registered voter, knowing before you go what you need to know, including viewing your ballot, or if you're interested in more information on early voting, I encourage you to go to our website www.walpole-ma.gov. Right on the home page, all of these major links are there, and additional information is found under election information on the town clerk's page. I want to thank you for taking the time to hear and listen to this broadcast, and I wish you all the best of luck as we all approach a very busy election cycle. Thank you.